In the Mojave Desert, amongst the rattlesnakes and sand dunes, baking at 115 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 miles from the nearest freshwater source, sits a full field of racing royalty waiting for the flag to drop. Only a gambling man would see the opportunity, and it took a casino tycoon gangster to make that opportunity a reality, a miracle of motorsport which appeared overnight and disappeared just as quickly. Laid with money to make money. She was known as Stardust. This beautiful motorsports venue, seemingly in the middle of nowhere, was known as the Stardust International Raceway. When the track first opened in 1965, association could easily have been made to the nearby Stardust Hotel and Casino, one of the largest in the world at its time, but in fact, like many aspects of the circuit, things were not quite what they seemed. Officially, the circuit was a joint venture of the Desert Inn and Stardust Hotel and Management Group between them. But in reality, the circuit's main owner was a famous gangster, bootlegger, and casino gambling proprietor named Mo Dalitz. Dalitz was known as Mr. Las Vegas, one of the men who built and shaped the city in the early 20th century. The raceway was one of many expansion opportunities for Dalitz and his empire, and when Dalitz built something, he spared no expense. The raceway was a state-of-the-art 13-turn, three-mile road circuit through the desert, six miles west of the Las Vegas Strip. The circuit was designed by Erwin Mulaski. Known for his work on the hotels and country clubs, a racing circuit was a new endeavor. But despite this, the venue was expertly laid out. The front straight of the circuit served as a dual-purpose quarter-mile dragway. The officiating towers and administrative buildings featured air conditioning, grandstands were erected along the key corners, and plenty of the area alongside the track was reserved for general admission and RVs. The 13-turn layout had minimal elevation changes, but was comprised of several fast and slow speed corners, as well as a beautiful sequence of S's built to equally challenge drivers and their machines. Jackie Stewart described it as a very nice circuit, and one he looked forward to racing. The circuit was Las Vegas' first home of motorsport, and its opening immediately rose to prominence as a top-level motorsport venue. When the circuit was first completed in 1965, it was announced that racing would begin immediately, and the first event was to be held in November. The management group made sure their event would draw attention, billed as the Stardust Grand Prix, the event was open to sports cars and had prize money totaling $37,000, over $300,000 in today's money, and certainly the largest prize awarded for any motor race in Nevada, if not much of the western United States up to that point in history. The prize for 1965 was big time racing, nearly half as much as awarded at the Indianapolis 500 the same year. And as the management group hoped, the racing community took notice. Chaparral with Jim Hall and Hap Sharp, Parnelli Jones and Walt Hanskin driving Lolas, the Lotuses of Peter Revson, George Fulmer, and additional entries of Bob Bondurant, Jerry Grant, and Ronnie Bucknam, amongst others, filed their entries for the Grand Prix sports car race. NBC came to cover the event for their Sports in Action series, and the eyes of the whole motorsports world were transfixed on the desert. The inaugural event from the racing perspective was a massive success, and Hap Sharp, driving one of the chaparrales, took the victory, and with it, the high prize of $8,000. The circuit's main purpose was to attract top-level racing talent, and therefore the casino's high rollers and gamblers, allowing the hotel to sell rooms and fill their casinos on a race weekend, gambling on the races themselves a key feature. The financials of the whole operation were suspect, but the drivers always got paid and the fans packed the track. One driver was quoted as saying he didn't know exactly what went on at the track behind the scenes, but it was a great place to race.
1966, the circuit welcomed the Can-Am Championship for their season finale and began hosting regular NHRA events on the dragway. The Can-Am series attracted most of the top teams and drivers in the world, and with most of the grid looking like a disguised F1 event, the technology of Can-Am automobiles outpaced even their European counterparts. Greats such as Surtees, Holm, McLaren, Andretti, Donahue, Stewart, Eamon, Jim Hall, and Dan Gurney launched through the desert, their sleek Can-Am machines dancing in the sunlight. In 1968, just three years after it opened, the circuit drew the attention of USAC and the IndyCars. Now the largest motorsport racing series in the United States held a championship event March 31st with Bobby Unser emerging the victor. But despite the seeming visual success, all was not well behind the scenes. The day after the USAC IndyCar race, the management group disbanded, and with it hopes of a future at the raceway. Money had been disappearing mysteriously associated to the speedway. Drivers and teams had received their pay, but suspicious overdrafts from casino holdings had meant the races were not as successful as originally hoped. In one instance, $68,000 had been discovered as missing for the $37,000 actually paid out in the 1965 races. To compound this, earlier in 1967, Dalitz had sold his ownership of the Desert Inn to Howard Hughes. For better or for worse, motivation and the direction of management shifted. In 1968, one last Can-Am event was held at the traditional season finale. During the event, tragedy struck when Jim Hall's chaparral launched into the air in a violent accident, severely injuring Hall and ending his racing career. And overnight, it was gone. Casino management closed the circuit after the Can-Am race, and although it was resold, it was never fully reopened for road racing. Stardust fell dormant in 1971, and the land sold to real estate developers. The location of the circuit was eventually redeveloped into one of the many sprawling suburbs of Las Vegas, known today as Spring Valley. Stardust International Raceway only existed for six years, but in those six years, the whole motorsports world knew she existed. They will go where the money and the spotlight is. And for a moment, it was in the Mojave. 